Hi, welcome to another edition of Dr. Aaron Explains the Universe, Star Wars edition. So in this one, we're going to be talking about something that has kind of plagued the fan base for a long time, particularly if you are in that crossover of Star Wars fan and astronomer or astrophysicist, and that is the Kessel Run. You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. When you see this as a astrophysicist, um, your radar goes up and you become that person. <laughs> you go, oh, well, mm, uh -huh, see, well, uh, parsec is a unit of distance, not a unit of time, which is how it sounds in the film. Now we can retcon it all we want and I'll come back to what the actual explanation is. Um, but first I want to say why astronomers have that reaction and why we all go, hm, well, no, not really. Um, and explain what a parsec actually is. So you may have heard that a parsec is a unit of distance, not time. Um, but what is that unit of distance? How do we calculate it? And it's one of these cool astronomy type calculations that we have to do because space is so big that we need to come up with other distances that help us um, give meaningful numbers to things. So we use light, light years as one example. Um, that's the distance that light takes to travel uh, in a year. And a parsec is another unit of distance. So what is it? Well, a parsec is a combination of two words that is parallax and arc second. So I'll go through each one of those. Um, the first one that's easiest to explain is what an arc second actually is. So you imagine a circle, you have a circle takes 360 degrees. You break out all of those degrees. So you have little pie slices that are degree wide. Um, and then you can break down those pie slices even more. And so one degree can be broken down into 60 arc minutes. And each arc minute has a really tiny little slice of the pie that we call um, an arc second. So we have 60 arc seconds make up an arc minute and 60 arc minutes make up a degree and 360 degrees make up a circle. Kind of work? Hope so. Um, now that might seem like it's really, really small. Now, if you were to draw the circle like I drew it here, an arc second would be a super, super tiny sliver that we couldn't even draw. Um, but imagine that, you know, as the circle gets bigger, you take a degree. By the time you get to the outside of the circle, that part is pretty big. And so it's the same idea when you're looking out into space. What's taking up a degree on Earth actually takes up a huge slice of the sky in space. And so that's why we break it down into arc minutes and arc seconds. So we have arc seconds, that's what those are, 1 60th of an arc minute, which is 1 60th of a degree, which is 1 360th of a circle. All right, so now what is parallax? Now parallax is, is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to look like a huge dork when I do this, but I guarantee you're going to try it yourself, so you're going to look like a dork too, so we're not going to make fun of each other because <laughs> uh, it's really actually pretty cool. So uh, parallax is what happens when, I want you to take a finger, your thumb or whatever, um, Hold it in front of your face and close one eye and then close the other eye and pay attention to where the thumb looks like it's at against the wall behind you. Um, and when you do one eye over the other, you can see it actually looks like it's moving positions. Um, that's kind of what parallax is. It's the apparent position changing as you're viewing things from a different side. So where does that come into space? Well, one of the main things that we use it for is we can measure how far away something is using the parallax as the Earth goes around the sun. Now, that sounds kind of complicated, but imagine each eye here is on each side of the sun. So the sun is going to be my nose, and then each side here is going to be where the Earth is in its orbit around the sun. So we're looking at a star, my thumb, as we go around the sun, and we're on one side of the sun and we see the star off in this direction, and then we go on the other side of the sun, I can't do that side very well, we go on the other side of the sun and we see the star over in this direction. Um, and so we can look at those two directions and make up a distance there from where it looks like it is, um, and there's a certain degree, right? From those two, two apparent positions, those two parallax that we have. Um, so the cool thing is, is that hold your thumb kind of close to your eyes, maybe like mm, five, six inches or something, and you can see it actually looks like a big chunk is moving against the wall. So you go one side to the other side. Uh, I really can't do that eye. <laughs> one side to the other side. Um, but if you move your thumb further away from you and do it again, it doesn't look like it's moving that much. It's only maybe looking like it moves about that much. 
So that might be a smaller wedge of the pie and a smaller um, angle or a smaller fraction of an angle that we're looking at. So astronomers do this with stars. They look at stars on one side of the sun versus the other side of the sun while the earth is going around over the course of a year. So you measure it on one side and then you wait six months and you measure it on the other side and you see, might see the apparent position of these stars change by a really, really tiny amount. But remember, we have these things called arc seconds, which are tiny, tiny fractions of a degree that allow us to measure this. So remember when I said you hold it about six inches here and it takes up a distance there and then you move it far away, maybe a couple feet, maybe, and it's a smaller distance. Um, you can actually use that change in the distance or that distance itself to measure how far away it was. And they do that with stars. So the idea is as the earth goes around the sun from one side to the other side, if the apparent position of a star changes by one arc second, then it's a parsec away. So the parallax of the star is an arc second, which that's the distance that we're gonna use. That's our ruler. So that's what makes up a parsec. Um, so parsec is approximately, <laughs> this much. I need to look it up. <laughs> um, but you can see it's such a huge number that we just use parsecs. So when you say that you run the Kessel run in 12 parsecs, we all go, hmm, but that's a unit of distance. So how could you do that? And then when astronomers collectively all said that when Star Wars came out, they went, oh yeah, cause reasons. <laughs> and in the old explanation, the way that they had it was that uh, the Kessel run was sort of an old smuggling route um, around the Kessel mines. And you, you had to go kind of the long way around um, through what they called the pit, which was kind of a perilous journey through asteroids, but it wasn't too bad. Um, it just took a long time. Or you could also, the shortcut for the Kessel Run is through the Maw Cluster, which is a cluster of black holes. And if you've seen my ta other talks on space time or black holes or anything like that, um, I'm gonna do a whole episode on black holes later this year, so we can talk more about them then. But the Maw Cluster is a cluster of black holes. Now, we've never observed that, in space. We've now seen two black holes collide, but we've not seen a black hole cluster. Um, imagine, no reason why there couldn't be though, so we'll go with it. Um, so there's a cluster of black holes called the Maw Cluster, um, which is obviously pretty perilous. And uh, you can shortcut the Kessel Run by going through that and sort of dodging around these shortcuts of these black holes, um, trying to keep your ship pretty uh, safe from the distortion in space time. So all up my alley, all objectively awesome, and you know, the retconning for it kind of worked. Um, now with the new canon that's coming out, they've actually changed it a little bit. So the Kessel Run is actually a run through hyperspace, um, and you're able to dodge distortions in space time with hyperspace, and I still need to think about that and figure it out. Um, the best explanation I could come up with though is remember how I've said before that hyperspace um, is sort of the area above or below our sheet of space time as it were well that sheet of space time gets distorted and if you think about this wider bulk of the you know bigger than the universe where our universe is the sheet of space time plus the hyperspace around it um our universe is going to be slightly distorted with things like black holes and heavy objects that are going to weigh it down and, and distort it into hyperspace a little bit and so you could say that the Kessel Run is weaving through these distortions in space-time. But to be honest, I prefer the old legends explanation of dodging a black hole cluster, or going through a black hole cluster in real space. So I'm gonna go with that one. Don't tell anyone. If they come up with a more clear explanation of the Kessel Run in the new canon, then we'll go with it. But anyway, all just fun to think about. I hope you understand what a parsec is now and why your astronomer friend went, well, actually, when they were watching the movie, and now you can do it too. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed the episode and thanks for watching. And as always, you can find me online at Dr. Aaron Mack on Twitter, Instagram, all of those things, Twitch uh, as well. And um, thanks for watching. I will catch you next time. See ya.